Ronald Jones' works are physical illustrations or realizations of particularly loaded socio-political situations. The full meaning of his objects is only revealed by their precise titles. Otherwise, the works appear to be handsomely made art objects in a state of camouflage. In his recent works, even the described significance has become oblique. Jones now joins a pair of components, then polychromes them to resemble the color schemes dominant in certain fashion magazines. The results are nihilistic, domestic-scale monuments that largely thwart the eye's constant search for meaning. The, the table is the one behind the uh, electric chair by Warhol mm -hmm. and um, was used by the prison doctor there to uh, perform numbers of autopsies. And what is it that's sitting on top of it? That's the um, oxygen connector from uh, an Apollo lunar spacesuit from uh, the uh, Apollo 17 mission. And it was worn by uh, Eugene Cernan. So both of these things have a very specific historical reference, but the references, the two histories are very different histories. Yeah. I mean, there is a, um, a kind of surrealist fusion created out of this. Um, even though both of the work, or both of the objects, are very particular and specific, um, when they're brought together, they uh, deflect any specific meaning, and that's one of the functions of all the work. Mm -hmm. And then, what's the f the function of the label? Is to bring that bring that up to visibility? Well, uh, to give it a certain kind of institutional authority. The text and and is there in a very uh, a direct and kind of descriptive way and, and style, and the photographs are documentary photographs. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this is the way I imagined a museum would uh, would do it. Ron, talk to us about um, how these pieces are colored or decorated. Well, the um, color scheme or the design of um, all of them are taken uh, largely from the popular press. Um, the, uh, in the, the instance of the uh, hanging boards, uh, this is a color scheme. The maroon of the base and the natural colored wood and the black and white is taken from Madonna's exercise room, lifted from Vogue. And all of the uh, um, designs are, are done that way so as to have a kind of appeal to a particular audience, which is this um, managerial class, or what Lyotard describes as the decision makers. Um, and those are the people who I'm more, most interested in. Uh, What's this thing superimposed on top? Um, up here. Yes. Mm. Th this is uh, uh, the, uh, a sculpture built by David the Bubble Boy. Um, who had an immune deficiency uh, syndrome um, and spent his life in a, a bubble that NASA designed for him. Um, and at the point at which uh, NASA would no longer uh, sustain that project because they feared the legal liabilities that might be involved from a, um, a breakdown in, in, in the bubble system, the bubble house, uh, David eventually had to leave the bubble um, and, and died. And his sure. sculpture was a was an accumulation too. It's two jars. And yeah, a, yeah. It's and a it, he called it the light beacon. The light beacon. And then this is all set onto. In fact, each one of these is a particular kind of setting. And this is set onto uh, a trap door, mm -hmm. uh, like you would find uh, on a gallows. In fact, lifted right out of the photograph. Um, in most instances, I, I try to make as few decisions as possible. I'm sure you're conscious of how often and what a prominent part death plays in all these things. That was, it finally became intentional after a, a while. I mean, there, there is certainly this juxtaposition of life with death in almost every instance. Um, but these objects seem to be so demure, um, so restrained in certain respects, and death and life is such a wildly, or are such wildly exaggerated subjects that um, I wanted to create that level of contradiction between the subject, something as um, uh, dramatic as death, and the subtleties of the objects, uh, the, or, the subtle, or the subtle appearance that the object seems to have. So disaster is uh, an inherent part of all of them? That... Yeah, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> even, even the irony of some of the life-saving devices that ultimately resulted in some sort of failed 
kind of optimism. One of the things that seems obvious is that there's always something between something like a, an institutional object or an institutional frame and something like an individual. So that on one, one hand we have yeah. something like all of the history of, of uh, you know, people in hiding like Anne Frank or something because of the Nazis. And then on the other hand we have a small child, a baby, who's been kept alive, you know, by virtue of a, of a transplanted heart. Is that one of the tensions that is revealed in, in some of the work besides life and death is also the individual versus the, what we call yeah. the state of yeah, that's, it's, that seems to me a question at the heart of political reform right now, is how the individual stands in relationship to the institution. Can the individual expect to alter the, the in institution over the course of a lifetime? And that seems to me um, uh, unlikely. Do you want to describe how you get this to be the exact size? I assume you didn't go to Tenement Square and find yeah. one of the trestles. So how do you actually know how to make this trestle from Tenement Square? This is a, a question of technology. Uh, we have a computer that takes a picture of, of, the, of the trestle. And the computer makes measurements based on other objects in the photograph. Um, and then gives us a three-dimensional model uh, on a computer screen mm -hmm. of the exact dimensions. And, and then you, from that you just actually have it built? Yeah, and also we are very careful to use uh, uh, fabrication techniques which are common um, to the uh, country um, or even sections of the countries where these objects come from. In other words, the building techniques of the uh, trestle from Tenement Square um, are, are lifted from, uh, or construction techniques are lifted from uh, techniques that are common in China, whereas in the Anne Frank bookcase, the techniques are common. Um, they build bookcases differently in Amsterdam than we build them here. Either it is the object, or in the case where we couldn't uh, find the, o couldn't actually use the object as in the Anne Frank bookcase, we went to Amsterdam, took measurements, and made the thing. Um, so, th so the scale is determined by the, by the object itself. But in this kind of institutional setting, of course, it, it perks uh, interest at the level of fetish objects. That's, that's what, especially with the, uh, for example, the oxygen connector or the artificial heart, mm -hmm. they, they become these kinds of very particular fetish objects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I see these things as time capsules radiating with meaning and also uh, having the capacity to change their meaning or alter their meaning um, as political, historical, social mm -hmm. um, uh, situations change, that, that they're flexible enough uh, to have a fairly long shelf life. Mm -hmm. You see the work as having an emotional impact as well as this kind of intellectual impact of history, I mean, of, of getting out of that historical amnesia and, and bringing things back to life in a way, but do you also see it as having a certain kind of emotional impact? Yeah, I mean, to stand in front of Anne Frank's bookcase or in front of the chair um, where someone ate their last meal, I think has to be a very compelling experience.